Uh, yeah, so thanks everyone for joining. Um, I hope this is going to be an interesting session. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best at least. Um, so uh, what I'm going to uh, speak about is building a medical device uh, with R. Uh, but before I sort of go into what a medical device is, um, I want to briefly explain what, what we uh, actually do. So um, I work at a company called InsideRx. And we, um, we, we um, uh, built uh, a medical device, as you would have uh, um, guessed. But um, to go into what, uh, that actually, what we are actually building, um, let's say, and let's hope it, it won't happen, but let's say you have to go into the hospital for uh, maybe an, an, an infection or something. Um, you will get a, uh, a dose of a drug. Um, but you have to realize that uh, those is often um, uh, developed based on a um, uh, sort of the average of a, a p p p p population. And it might not actually be uh, the best dose for you as an individual because you might be sort of on, the, on, on one of the extremes of, the, of, the, um, uh, of, of, of that um, in terms of the, the, the pharmacology. Now, this is especially important for drugs like antibiotics, chemotherapy, and transplantation drugs. Um, and especially if you're very young, if you're very old, or if you're very sick, um, this, is, this, is, this is actually very important to get uh, the right dose for you as an individual. Now, um, if, if we have some um, information about you, let's say you have the weight, the height, uh, the age of you, and we know uh, all, all the, the, let's say the, 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 the the history of, uh, of, of all the drugs that you took. We, um, we measured uh, the concentration of drug in, in your body and perhaps some other biomarkers. And maybe we even have some uh, g g genomic data from you. Uh, we can actually, uh, that, that can actually help uh, to inform you um, uh, about um, what, what you should actually receive in, 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 in terms of uh, a drug dose. And, we use that data to, uh, to update uh, our models, uh, the pharmacology models um, that we use. Uh, and we, we use uh, Bayesian updating uh, to, to, to actually get to what would be the optimal um, uh, ch choice for, for you as an individual. Now, we uh, wrap this framework. Um, it, uh, we, we, we built a, a cloud-based web application around this framework. Uh, based again on those uh, pharmacology models, so uh, so it's not like a machine learning black box that we don't know what's what's going on. This is uh, yeah, this is, this is all grounded in pharmacology. And the last thing I want want to highlight here is that it's integrated into the clinical workflow. So uh, the intended users here are um, uh, it's it's it it will mostly be pharmacists, but also uh, we have a few uh, d d doctors that are that are uh, using the platform. Now to get, get back to the medical device part, uh, what is a medical device? Well, we all know that um, this and this and this is a medical device, I guess. But in this talk, I'm going to focus on um, what is uh, software as a medical device. And uh, in, in, uh, uh, more specifically, I'm going to talk about uh, clinical decision support uh, tools. Um, if you decide to make a, uh, to build a medical device, um, most likely you will go to the following stages. Uh, where in the, um, the pre-development stage, you basically decide which uh, which class of medical device you're going to be, uh, what are the claims you you are making, um, and this is also the stage where you set up a, a quality system, uh, and then in the next stage, you'll uh, begin development of your product uh, under uh, design controls under the, the quality system that you that you developed. And then uh, in later stages, you'll um, apply um, a f a f uh, the, the verification framework that you set up. And then uh, before you file with the FDA, you do some uh, v validation uh, with, with, with actual users. Uh, and then you're, you should be good to, to re release this uh, into the wild. Um, the important, uh, I, I would say the most important thing in this whole process is probably uh, the, uh, the, the risk analysis that you will do. Uh, you will do that uh, really early on. And uh, in basically, you scope out what, what are all the risks associated with, with the medical device. And once you have that, you can actually develop uh, a document called uh, the so so software specifications. 
And that, uh, that is just a long list of uh, things like um, uh, the, the software shall be able to do this, uh, and that, uh, yeah, basically 100 times or, or more. So uh, all these requirements, uh, what you can do, do then is map these to actual uh, f f verification steps. So uh, what, that, what that means in practice, you actually write out uh, a specific um, a s uh, requirement as a, a s s s s s s s scenario in, in code. Uh, and then um, you'll basically run through all these uh, verification steps. Um, so if, if you speak about the, the web app as a whole, what you usually use for that is, uh, for example, a tool like Selenium. Uh, but uh, in the context of um, uh, the, the, the conference here, I'm going to speak mostly about the API because that's, that's the part uh, what's, what's written in R. And for that, uh, mainly for the unit test, we use uh, test uh, that, uh, as uh, I'm sure a lot of you uh, are also using. But uh, I want to focus on uh, one other thing here is that um, what we developed in-house, which is a package called uh, JSON2. Test and what, what that package specifically is doing is um, uh, oh I also want to refer here to the the talk yesterday by uh, Alice Huge, uh, which was a, a, a very interesting talk, uh, um, uh, more or less about the same thing here. Um, but going into the the package that we developed, um, what the package does is because if you remember all the um, requirements that we had to um, to write down and to, to write out as as, as code. Instead of writing these all out as code, as a specific scenario to walk through, we actually uh, record the, the API payloads that are uh, being um, uh, sent uh, from the web app, and then um, write a, um, a document uh, uh, that basically specifies what we expect that API load to be, and then uh, we compare it with the actual API output. So um, instead of writing all these tests, uh, we use a package to, to actually do it for us. Um, so that, that has helped us to, uh, to implement this uh, a lot faster than we would uh, otherwise have been able to do. So this, this, this package is also available um, uh, uh, in, in this link. Uh, it's not yet on CRAN. Uh, so that's more or less what I want to say about um, sort of the, uh, the, um, the, the, the validation, the, the verification steps that are required. But I also want to um, go into more about what is required, um, what, what, what other things are required. So, um, yeah, um, what you also find in the in the regulatory documents is a lot of stuff about security, privacy, stability, and things like that. But once you go speaking to clients, there there will also be other um, requirements. Uh, of course, clients also. Uh, have a lot of requirements um, about security and privacy, etc. But they also um, um, want you to have a uh, like a, 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 a nice product, uh, a good UI, UX. Uh, it has to be fast. So, um, the, uh, like I said, the, the end user of our products are clinicians. They um, they they uh, they, they uh, w won't have the time to wait for half an hour for 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 dose advice. So it has to be there uh, very quickly. Um, so then we can go into uh, some of the ch ch choices that we made and uh, th uh, what, what we developed. And the first thing here is the, the computations. And um, like I said in the introduction, uh, we use uh, pharmacology models. And those are uh, often defined as um, differential equations. And um, when we started out five years ago, there was not really uh, a package uh, or, or, or anything in, in R to, to actually handle that. So that's what, why we wrote a package called PKPD Sim. Um, and the, the, the main thing that it's doing, it's just um, doing a, 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 it can do a prediction of the, the, the concentration of a specific drug uh, in, in the body over time. And that's, uh, that's basically the core of our, of our platform. Uh, again, this, 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 this is also uh, open source. Uh, it's open source available. And uh, the, the um, the, the, the sort of the lesson that we learned here over time is what that um, well at first uh, it took a long um, a lot of work to um, to actually implement this ourselves, but uh, over time we realized that that is actually has been very um, uh, very good for us because 
that that really helps uh, helped us in uh, the re regulatory process because we know the ins and outs of the, of this package. We know the weaknesses and the strengths. So um, it's yeah, if the if the FDA ever comes uh, to our door and uh, uh, asks us uh, the, the, um, qu questions about this uh, this package, uh, it will be very easy for us to to to, to provide them with answers. <laughs> Uh, another thing that this, uh, this package does is uh, because we have to support uh, not just one, one model, but we support over 100 uh, uh, pharmacology models, uh, the, the, the PKPD SIM uh, package can actually generate um, uh, new packages uh, based on uh, specifications that you provide. So you write a spec file um, uh, where you uh, descri describe the drug and you describe the equations for that, um, uh, for that specific model. That will be then uh, put into uh, a package um, uh, example. And then that will be um, uh, compiled, validated, and deployed. And the benefits of this is this, that it makes it uh, a lot easier and faster to uh, develop these models and, and also to maintain it, and also to um, uh, create the, 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 the end user d documentation for all these models, because that's some, also something that we have to provide to, uh, to the clinician or, or to the pharmacist. So then a little bit uh, about the architecture. Uh, well, we're, we're speaking, about, speaking at an, um, an, an, an R uh, co conference, and we're, we're speaking about uh, web applications. So um, the, 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 the elephant in the room uh, that we have to address is uh, Shiny. Um, and of course, uh, uh, I think it's, 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 um, it's, 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 it's fine to, um, to, to write uh, a medical device in sh sh shiny. That's, uh, that's, that's absolutely, absolutely no, no objection to that. Um, there's, uh, if you, if you, and if you're worried about uh, sort of the, um, um, uh, the scalability of that, uh, you can always split off the, the API uh, so that it's, it scales independent, independently from the, from the web application. Uh, so that's completely fine, but um, really early on we made the decision to not go with Shiny, and that was mostly because uh, we thought in the end it would be, the, the application would be um, uh, too complex, uh, there, there would be too hard to, to develop in Shiny. That's why we uh, went with a sort of a more uh, a d default uh, j j j JavaScript uh, stack. If we then go into the API itself, which we of course left in, in, in R, um, we need to, to um, what you have to keep in mind is, is uh, the, the scale and then the, the load requirements for the API. Well, we don't have the, um, uh, the load requirements that were, that were uh, pre presented before, like a million uh, users a day or a million API calls a day. We have uh, a, little, a little bit less. We have now, um, I mean, we, we are growing, but we have, we have uh, about a, a few hundred API calls an hour. Um, but you, you do have to keep in mind that um, uh, the, the, uh, the, it's not always the same uh, over the course of a day. Um, there, we always have a peak in the in the in the in the morning when the the, the users on the on, on, on the east coast uh, wake up. And what you also have to keep in mind is that uh, the length of the API call is not always the same. Um, we have a lot of API calls that are really fast uh, within, within a second, but there's also API calls that um, that, that that actually take much longer, uh, depending on how much uh, information you have uh, for, for the for the specific patient. Um, so that, that, that also leads to the question of uh, what API framework you, you, you're going to use. Well, when we started out uh, about five years ago, uh, the first API framework that we built was, was um, our, our, our own. Um, uh, but uh, we, we quickly realized that um, a, a great, a great um, application already existed, and that was called OpenCPU, which basically exposes uh, uh, our packages as uh, as an API, and that 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 uh, that has has worked really well for us. Um, and uh, we initially put that just on a server in the cloud, uh, um, but later we moved it uh, uh, to a, um, uh, a, 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 a 
dockerized version, so it, it would, uh, would scale more easily up and down, uh, depending on the load. And that's, that has worked really well for us. Um, of course, uh, at this meeting, there has been a lot of talk already about Plumber. Uh, we are looking into it. It, it has a few um, uh, nice things that it, it can do, um, but th th there will be something for the future. Uh, we, we, we might move to that. Another thing here uh, that, that would be good to mention is maybe uh, a, a, a Lambdas on Amazon. Uh, which basically um, allows you to upload a specific function and then uh, you, you, you can easily uh, use that function and you don't have to worry about this, the, the, the scaling at all. So uh, that's another option that, that we might look into. And uh, I also know that there's a lot of um, uh, other folks that, that are working on API frameworks. Um, but I, I don't have the time to go into that. So to round off, um, I think, um, yeah, the, the main question, the medical device in R, if there was a, 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 a question mark in, in, in anyone's mind, I think, uh, uh, yes, it, it's, it's, um, uh, it's not a problem. Uh, there's no uh, regulatory requirement that, that actually says you have to def, uh, develop your tool in, in a specific language. Um, a functional uh, f uh, testing is really important. Uh, remember all those re requirements that you have to go through. Um, and what really helped us, I think, uh, to, um, to, to actually do that, to, to develop th that uh, at scale, is um, store as much in uh, m m metadata as you can. Uh, that also really, really helped us with uh, maintaining all, the, all these models uh, uh, as well. Uh, and then the last thing that I um, uh, br briefly mentioned is that, uh, I, in my opinion, it really helped us to, that we at least uh, the crucial code uh, for our medical device that we, that we, that we had to, to uh, write it ourselves so we know exactly what's, what's going on. And, uh, under the hood. Um, well, thank you for your attention, and uh, I have, I'd be happy to ask some questions. So we have uh, a couple of questions, mostly on the clinical side. So um, how does this functionality integrate into the clinical workflow, and uh, does it integrate into an EHR? Yeah, that's a that's, that's a great one. Um, yes, we we do integrate with uh, all the major um, EHR vendors like uh, Epic and Cerner, uh, and, th th um, and the way it usually works is um, uh, the pharmacist or, or the, the, uh, the, the 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 doctor is actually working on the patient in in, the, in their main workflow, and then they can click a button uh, to get a, an advice from us. Um, and that, that basically brings up um, uh, the, the, our, our, our web application. And then uh, in, in, in our view, uh, so all the, um, the specific data that we need is already there. So uh, the, the user only has to look at our screen and, and make a, make a d d d decision about the dose. So they don't actually have to enter any, any, any more data. Thank you. And, um does, um, let's see, how about um, domain knowledge in, in the development process? Are, are, do you have pharmacists on your team? Yes, uh, I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> uh, but I'm also a researcher and a developer, uh, so I have, uh, I have more than one hat. But uh, we do now have um, uh, three pharmacists on staff as well. Um, uh, to, to help with development, to, um, because they, they actually know uh, what's important to, to, to actually show to the user. They help a lot out with the support as well. Um, so. so is the, is the device uh, effective um, across classes of drugs like oncological or psychotropic drugs? Yeah, we, we, we have a few uh, modules in oncology. Uh, I would say most of our uh, modules are in the Infectious diseases, because that's, that's where the, the most uh, need is. But we are uh, looking into a, a lot of other classes as well. Yeah. So thank you so much. So please thank our speaker. Thank you.